What's up gamers? I'm Coach and this is my Hardcore Iron Man. The end goal of this account is to try and survive to the front page of the Hardcore Iron Man achievement high scores. Making things more interesting, these high scores are bugged. Dead hardcores are given a random rune score, so if we ever lose our hardcore status, we lose our place on the high scores. To make it to the front page, we're going to have to take on nearly every achievement in the game, including some absolutely insane combat achievements. So, to get the hardcore ready to take on anything and everything, our first priority on the account will be completing all the quests, mini quests, and area tasks in the game. This should give us access to everything we need to take on the real challenges later, and will encourage me to get a solid base of skills along the way. Last episode, we got 99 defense, constitution, and strength on the account. We also completed the vampire quest line, unlocking the reforged sun spear and the ability to kill Viawatch to train prayer. This episode, I want to carry on with that plan, tackling the Mauritania Elite achievements for 50% more prayer XP when killing Vyas, which is going to make that training method much more effective. This will be no small feat, however, as there's a plethora of quest and skill requirements we'll need to complete, including 77 runecrafting, 87 summoning, 96 fishing, and Ritual of the Marjorie, which has its own tangled web of quest requirements. The first task on the list was knocking out 87 summoning. I started this little mission by using up my gold charms to make a bunch of tarot bird pouches. Not the greatest XP out, but summoning pouches break down for some handy components, so it's always nice to have a few budget ones to disassemble. This took us to level 80 summoning, and I was left with a little over 2000 tarot birds to disassemble for components. Good old Jack of Trades carried us the next little bit to 81, and then it was off to the desert to mine granite to use with my crimson charms so I could make granite lobster pouches. It only took a couple of hours of mining and cutting before I had the granite I needed for 87 summoning, and so, with the first damn lot hour that came up, we got stuck straight into making some pouches. Now, whipping up these granite lobsters on damn lot hour is about 2.5 million XP per hour, so we absolutely flew through the levels, hitting 87 summoning in no time flat, taking out our first main goal for the episode. Next, I wanted to get set up to have case and fishing in the background. Now, I know technically I could boost the 96 required with Mauritania elites, but I'm going to need something to AFK, so why not fishing? It also means I can finally give that bait and switch relic we unlocked last episode a go. So, fishing away in Menifos is what I'll be up to in my AFK time, and I'll update you all a little later on when we've made some progress. Okay, so OBS was a little bit slow to start recording, and I got a bit excited, so the broadcast for Flow got cut off, but... We got Flo the Fletching Pet while making some broad arrows before a tree event. And uh, if we roll clip from where the recording does start. And we just got Jacket Trades, bro. This is a great tree. This is a fantastic little tree. <laughs> Hold up. Here it comes. And there's level 99 farming as well. Let's go. That looks really good. I love it. I love it. Yep. Should we do the emote? Let's do the emote. I was just squishing some scarab, and there we go. We just got level 90 Slayer. Unlock Dark Beasts, Edamu, New Ports Adventurer, so many. Oh my goodness. 90 Slayer is a bit of a big one, apparently. We love a good Tears of Gothics weekly, don't we? And this weekly tier session just got us to 77 runecrafting. Which is the level we needed for the Mauritania Elite tasks. I was thinking I'd have to go to Runespan, but uh, dailies and weeklies did the trick, man. Dailies and weeklies did the trick. After that, I wanted to start work on Ritual of the Marjorie. And this is where the plan gets a bit strange, to be honest. So, you see, Ritual of the Marjorie requires rocking out. But I figured if I was going to do the pirate quest, I might as well do all of them. Well, the last pirate quest requires 85 thieving, so I thought I'd do some safe cracking. But I figured if I was training thieving, I might as well get level 91 out of the way, as that'll be required later on for the Tyronwyn area tasks. So, anyways, I, uh, I ended up grinding safes until I hit level 91 thieving. It, it is what it is, I guess. And then it was time to start questing with the Great Brain Robbery. Rescuing the monks of Harmony Island from Rabid Jack's zombie pirates. That is the Great Brain Robbery completed, plus two more quest points. Chunk of XP, that's pretty tasty. Barrel chest anchor, which I'm not too worried about. This was followed up by a trip to Rock Island Prison and Rocking Out to meet with young Ralph to try and get more information on Rabid Jack. He asked us to bring him the marks of the five pirate captains in exchange for his tail. Easier said than done, but done nonetheless. We've finished rocking out. 
That is fantastic. We're definitely going to have to sort out that rabbit jack fella. He seems problematic. So we went home to make a nice cup of tea and decide what to do when we were accosted by one of Rabbit Jack's barrel chest pirates in the start of a clockwork syringe. Mildly put out by this turn of events, we went on another piratical adventure to track down the source of these monstrosities and end their production for once and for all. Whilst we managed to find Rabbit Jack's first mate on this adventure, the pirate himself eluded us for now. We've taken out the barrel chest factory in a clockwork syringe, but Rabbit Jack is still free. A little bit more to go, I think. We weren't given up that easily, though, and returned to Rock Island Prison once more in Pieces of Hate. There, we discovered a plot to invade Mostly Harmless. We rushed to the island to fend off the invading forces before launching a counterattack on Brain Death Island to learn the final location of Rabbit Jack, a sunken pyramid beneath the cursed archipelago. There, we took the fight to Jack, finally defeating him for once and for all. Rabbit Jack's defeated! Finally! Scourge of the Ocean has been contained. And, uh, we get a whole bunch of goodies. Heaps of XP, some bonus XP, which I'm gonna put in summoning because I just am gonna do that until I get summoning to 95, I think. That is the pirate quests done. Pirate quest done, it was time to take a little break and do a general grad or reaper, where I managed to unlock the sacrifice ability, which is a nice basic that heals you a small amount of the damage dealt. We also picked up a pair of bandos boots along the way, which was another nice little upgrade. I then snuck off to do a little Shades of Morton with the clannies, and managed to get my 500 sacred oil ready for when I want to cremate vias and upgrade my sun spear. Added these to some maple logs so when the time comes, I'll have one less grind to worry about. Well, the AFK fishing has been giving us some decent invention XP, and disassembling this rod here takes us to level 96 invention. So, here we are, just waiting for a displaced energy event. Yeah, I'm still doing this. <laughs> we just got 92 fletching. Halfway to 99. And uh, then we got dragged along for a wee two hour Crocus session where we picked up first some grip on legs and then some boots. Both of which sadly were dupes. What was not a dupe however was level 99 mining here. And uh, just like that we have another skill cape in the collection. So I'm not exactly sure why I didn't do this earlier but uh, I've uh, stew boosted up here to make myself a death touch bracelet which is actually my new best in slot glove item for all combat styles. And I'm gonna take it for a spin at today's Queen Black Dragon Reaper here. And looks like we're picking up a Royal Bolt Stabilizer. This is actually the last piece I need to finish making my Royal Crossbow. So uh, take it to Thurgo here to have the bow assembled. And then it's just the ever so slightly dangerous task of brandishing it in the Queen Black Dragon's fire attack to finish the bow off. And just like that, we have a cute little ranged upgrade and a rather tidy QBD log, if I may say so myself. Time to chip away at those Ritual of the Marjorat prequests again, starting off with a tale of two cats, in which we discovered the mysterious history behind Bob the Cat. We go, quest complete, a tale of two cats. We uh, found out that Bob is in fact Robert the Strong. Then we restored Singleton's tomb and Missing My Mummy. And that is Missing My Mummy completed. Very nice. After that, it was restoring Anakra's temple in Anakra's Lament. Got a, an amulet of camel speak out of that, so that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah, I thought it was a good one. I thought it was a good one. Didn't take us too long. Didn't take us too long. We inadvertently assisted an assassin in stealing an artifact from Entrana in Devious Mines. That was Devious Mines. We helped a random dude sabotage a ceremony on Entrana and steal a relic. Whoops. We tracked down some ghostly followers of Zaros and slew the ghost of Bouncer to complete the curse of Zaros and General's shadow mini quests before solving the mystery of the murdered Clarence in Hand in the Sand. Poor Clarence got murdered by Sandy just so that Sandy could swindle poor Bert out of some free labour. The quests began to get serious with the curse of Arav, in which we returned to Zimmer Eagle's base to capture Arav's heart and weaken the curse on him, hopefully to one day return the old hero to rest. Quest complete! The curse of Arav is broken, I think. Get some tasty XP from that. That's pretty good. That was the final requirement for the temple at Senderston. As in Hadra asks for our assistance restoring the temple at Senderston to bring back here. Zaros from wherever he's been all this time. Finally unlocking ancient curses for the account. 
We helped Desenadro restore the temple at the Centers Den. And now we have access to ancient curses and some rather tasty XP lamps. What can I throw this XP on? Can I chuck it on summoning? Yes! Oh, mate, that is fantastic. Then it was a quick run through the Chaos Tunnels to track down Sorok Magus in the hunt for Sorok mini quest. Well, there we go, that's the hunt for Sorok completed. <laughs> This meant we could finally take on while Guthic sleeps, the last quest before Ritual of the Majorat. This was a quest of epic proportions, uncovering a plot by Lucian to use the Stone of Jazz to ascend to Godhood. The rewards were pretty impressive too. That's while Guthic sleeps done! Lucian's a whole lot more powerful, and all of our friends are dead. And uh, we can talk to Idria for four 100k XP lamps. Let's go summoning. Boom. Level 89. Dude, that's huge. Oh, the dragon get a burst! Ritual of the Majorat sees us hunting down the Stone of Jazz, which Lucian plans to use during the Majorat's rejuvenation ritual. We weren't quite quick enough, and despite a fierce battle, Lucian is able to once again draw power from the stone, angering the dragonkin who slay him. We then use a spell to hide the stone for once and for all. Quest complete! And that is all the quests we need for Mauritania Elites, and we get some huge XP lamps to chuck straight into summoning here. Let's go. And there's level 90 in the summoning skill. Oh man. I think we need to go grab our quest dice next. Let's see what do we get from our die. We got an armadillo plate body and two and a half mil cash. So there's an easy fortunate. Fantastic. One more for the pile. Oh, cheeky little 90 woodcutting coming in from Evil Tree event there. These things are just broken XP, eh? We are now up to 89 very wealthy rewards on the pile. So I reckon, I reckon we're going to have a little opening up at the end of this episode. Oh my goodness, that's quite exciting. The next step in the journey was upgrading the Sun Spear by cremating 500 Vire Corpses. So I whipped up some Dynahide for the magic defense, grabbed a Blisterwood Pole Arm, and moseyed off to the Vire Spot in Darkmire to collect 500 corpses. With the corpses collected, the next step in the process was cremating them all, which is done on the pyres beneath the Columbarium using the maple pyre logs we made earlier in the episode. This provides keys, which, when used to open the drawers in the Columbarium, offers a nice stash of herbs, seeds, and gems. Nothing too special, but better than nothing at all. Uh, the main thing here is the buff to our sun spear against the fires, which we want for when we're training prayer later on. We have a cheeky little hellware reaper. So I'm thinking I might see in 30 minutes. Do you reckon we'll get any drops? We didn't get any droppies, that reaper, but we did just get 89 attack, which takes us to 2,600 total level. Tell you what else is kind of huge. We can finally afford to unlock the reckless aura. Which means that we have finished unlocking all the auras from war now. That feels absolutely spectacular. Let's push out a few range levels, shall we? Let's see how high we can get. Hey, oh, there is level 90 ranged coming in. 91 ranged coming in. 91 range, let's go. Level 92 range. Whoa! We're halfway there. Okay, let's not do that again. There is level 93 range coming in. Goodness gracious me, 95 ranged. <laughs> oh, there we go. That is level 96 ranged. That feels raw gudge. Oh, level 97 ranged. Just two levels to go. And then I think I'll be done with EV3 grinding. Oh, and there we have level 98 range, man, just one more to go. We've got another skill cape in the bank. Hey, oh, there we go, ladies and gentlemen, 99 ranged. Man, I'm gonna have to go grab another cape in a moment, hey. And I think it's time to pick up our ranged cape. Let's go. <laughs> That's wonderful. We'll chuck that in the bank as cape number 10. Oh man, feels good. After that little EV3 trashy run, I suppose I should uh, siphon and disassemble some gear, which takes us up to level 98 invention. Oh my goodness gracious me. So 
We love skilling outfits, especially ones that give a bit of extra XP. And Agility has one too. It's called the Nimble Outfit. To get the Nimble Outfit, you have to track the interest of the talent scout there like we just did. And then you have to play this mini game. The mini game's a little bit random and you get a different one each time. Sometimes you're punching sheep. Sometimes you're searching crates. Sometimes you're pushing big buttons. To attract the interest of the talent scout, you just run agility laps. The problem is, is that there's only a 1 in 35 chance upon completing a lap to attract his interest, and you can only proc him once per hour. At the end of each pit, there is a 1 in 3 chance that you'll get a piece of nimble. We did not. So every day, I'm going to run some agility and hopefully get ourselves the nimble outfit done. So here we are killing Karapak and my maniacal aura has run out with one kill left on my reaper. I've got about 1200 reaper points at the moment though so I might as well unlock the marsh aura to finish this off. But this is quite a nice uh, quite a nice little upgrade that. No uniques this task but I gotta say the cannonball stash is starting to look pretty healthy. That is 96 fishing. Been here AFK in for ages but uh, looks like we won't need to boost for our Mauritania elites at all. I am now very well stocked up on beltfish and catfish and desert souls. But more importantly, fishing with the relic on has got me to 93 cooking. So I'll be able to cook up those rock tails, which is going to be really, really helpful for when I start getting through my sharks and cavefish. We're all set up, ready to roll for Mauritania elites now. I just need to finish off maxing those temple trekking characters. So we'll get into that tomorrow after dailies, I think. Oh, it's da -da 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 daily time, and it's farm run time, and my dragons are grown up. Oh my goodness, you love to see it. 101 farming income in there. Oh, that feels huge. Oh, oh sheesh. Oh, we just got level 94 fletching. Chilling, waiting for this wildy event. Heck yeah. There we go, statue's coming in clutch with 89 construction. Oh. And just because 89 construction wasn't enough, here's 93 prayer as well. Oh, two more levels and I can move to curses permanently. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. And so it's time to start some temple tracking. Heading into this, we had three main goals. The first was to level all six characters to 99 for the Mauritania Elite tasks. The second is to fully unlock the Constructor's Outfit for the bonus construction XP that provides. Our third and final goal for the Temple Tracking was to obtain the Lumberjack Outfit for the bonus woodcutting XP that that provides. Conveniently, Constructor's Outfit pieces are a reward for leveling the Temple Tracking characters, so obtaining this is just a byproduct of the main goal. The Lumberjack Outfit, on the other hand, well, that's locked behind three RNG gates. First, you need to get the Broken Bridge event, which is about a 1 in 15. Then, you need to get zombies, which is a 50-50 after that. Then, killing the zombies provides a 1 in 10 chance to get an outfit piece. Effectively making the outfit pieces stupidly annoying to get. Stupidly annoying to get. Oh, we got Lumberjack piece! <laughs> oh, oh, man! Okay, okay, alright, it's happening, it's happening. Training the followers up was pretty simple, if time consuming. For the early levels I just did runs as normal, but once they had some gear I just let them safe spot off me and kill enemies for the last couple of levels. 99, let's go! On to the next adventurer. Hey, and that's Pazuzu to level 99. Let's go, let's go! Dean was up next. Level 99! That's three out of six adventurers fully leveled up. And Zach Bragg was not far behind. Hey oh, level 99, let's just full send this idiot now. Full sending. And uh, that's four characters at level 99 now. And I think we've unlocked some goodies. Yeah, with just those four characters, Max, we've managed to finish up the constructor's garb. We got zombies on the bridge. Please, for the love of goodness, give me a piece of lumberjack. Oh, <gasps> yo, we got a lumberjack hat! Yeah, let's go! We're two out of four, we're two out of four. Smitty's level 98 right now, so Smitty might just get to level 99 on this trip. Smitty just hit level 99. This is the last run. After this, we are just gonna be hunting lumberjack outfit pieces with Relaine, I think. Nice looking bridge, that's the meta. Oh, 
we got a piece! One more to go! I don't even know how many runs it's been now since we saw a bridge, but we've got a bridge! Please, 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 please! Damn it! Well, apparently we just leveled up all of our temple trekking companions doing that. That is uh, Rolang Twicket to level, level 99. Can I get some, some undead lumberjacks here, please? Oh, it's been a few runs since we've even seen the zombie guys now. <gasps> oh! It exists! We're free! That's the most exciting drop we're gonna get all day. Oh, no way, hang on, we're opening 110 wildy bags in a bit, aren't we? So we've finally done with the temple tracking. We finally got our lumberjack outfit. Let's finally get the Mauritania elites knocked out. Knocking out the Mauritania easy tasks was, as is to be expected, pretty easy. There we go. Our Mauritania legs won. 50% chance that a cast will not attack when we're wearing the legs. Double fungi when casting bloom. And then 5% extra temple tracking rewards because I'm going to do so much more of that. It sends some mediums, eh? And about 20 minutes later. Okay, that's the Mauritania medium tasks done. Nice, there's our Mauritania legs too. Cannibals will be smith twice as fast and pot as Mattis. And 10% chance for extra blood runes when making blood runes. We can use the legs to teleport to the slime pit under Ectofuntus, which would be great if I was going to do that. Lyra will protect the mushroom patch and canifus, so it's disease free. That sounds lovely. And I think it's time to get dug into the hard achievements now. That is the hard tasks completed as well. So let's go hand those rewards in. Here we go. Mauritania legs three. Fabulous. 50% more prayer XP from cremating shades. Increased chance of getting better shade keys. Not that we're doing it. And 50% chance to save blood altar teleports when using them. We don't need a ghost speak amulet anymore to talk to ghosts. That's lovely. Prayer drain is halved in the barrows. Cute. Double runes from barrows. Nice. And we can bank directly from the barrows chest. That's quite nice. And the XP lamp is, of course, going into summoning. Another 20k there. Which takes us to level 92! Let's, uh, let's smash out these elite tasks real quick, shall we? But I decided to check my player-owned farm quickly first. I have 161 beans. Which I'm going to spend sending Adam off right here, right now. Wait, no, no shot. Hang on. Wait, no way! Wait, what? No, I think that's a breeding pair of gins. Let's go. It finally happened at the most random of times. And then it was back at it. It is. There we go. <laughs> that is the Mauritania Elite Tasks done. Now we should get 50% more fire making and prayer experience from cremating via corpses when we wear this. So this is going to be our main via training legs. 10% more Slayer XP in the Slayer Tower when we're wearing it. I'm not going to do that. 20% uh, chance of creating a 4-dose prayer renewal instead of a 3-dose when making them in Mauritania. So I might be making my potions, or well, making the prayer renewals here in Mauritania. Double harvest from Cannabis and Isiftar mushroom patches, which is really nice. And we can check, and we can find Moon. And a big book of piracy now caps at 60 charges, which is pretty fantastic. Let's throw these XP lamps all into summoning. 140k XP, that is pretty tidy. That is pretty tidy, and I'm feeling very good about that. Let's grab our wildy bags. Let's do it. Let's do it. It's taken a hot minute to stack them up. But we got them. 110. Number one, let's go. Let's get straight, to, straight into it. Mining Brawlers and Ruby Chalice. So it was time to get stuck into opening up very wildy bags. We were just about 20 in when this happened. We're like, ooh! <laughs> Let's go! Let's go, core number two! Core number two! Let's get it! <laughs> oh, baby! Alright, let's keep it going! This is a good day no matter what! The remainder of the event went relatively uneventfully with just the usual piles of draconic visages, salvages, and brawlers. Hopefully though we will uh, pull a third core and get ourselves a decimation so we've got a decent range weapon at some point in the near future. Okay, that is another 110 and we still don't have decimation. 
All in all, though, not a totally terrible haul. 10 pairs of relatively decent brawlers. 7.8k magic logs. 4,800 backy bolts, 7 vizies, 17 ruby chalices, around about 4.5 mil, bunch of caskets. Yeah, let's go sell all of these ruby chalices off to old mate in Lumbridge. Maybe we out these as well and see how we are looking. So we are up to 16 mil, so we got, we got, we got more than 15 mil from that little opening there. That's kind of cute. Yo, actually I forgot about the two portable obelisks. We need to out those as well. That's another mil right there out in these two. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is about all we have time for today. And about everything I had hoped to achieve today as well. I'm feeling pretty sad, apart from the total, complete, no, lack of a decimation, but it is what it is. That will come, I'm sure. So, thanks for watching, everybody. Hopefully, I'll see you all next episode when we finally get up to the release of Necromancy and the hardcore will really start to take off. Oh boy. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out. And uh, hey, if you liked the video, button down below. Bye.